Well, hey, everybody, it's Pastor Martin, and I'm so excited to have you with me today as we share today's podcast. We want to just have a conversation and talk about some of the recent events that have taken place in our country and in our states and in our world. And one of the things, of course, being the mass shootings in El Paso and also in Dayton, Ohio. We'll be right back. Well, hey, everybody, it's Pastor Martin, and I'm so grateful that you've joined me for today's uh, podcast. You know, as we are dealing with many things that are happening in the world and so much is going on every day when you turn on the news, you hear of something with breaking news on it on the local level, on the national level, international level, global level. Everything is always breaking news, a lot going on that keeps us engaged and keeps us busy as we look and deal with several things that are taking place. And of course, the last few weeks we've experienced and saw some things that have happened that were tragic things as far as mass shootings and killings uh, in Mississippi first and then in El Paso, Texas, and then also in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, I tell you, we first I want to send our condolences to those families that lost loved ones and even those that were injured in the shootings that are still dealing with their injuries, still in the hospital. We pray for them, and uh, we know that uh, God was, is able to sustain them and hold them and keep them up uh, and uh, just do something for them. So I, I want to just have a conversation, and let's uh, deal with some things as far as uh, these shootings. When we think of it, I know that a lot of times we don't like to deal with uh, hate crimes or deal with uh, uh, racism and all of those things. But many times as we look at these things, some of these things are prevalent, some of these things are happening, they're on the forefront, and we have to deal with them whether we are church or not church. We have to deal with them and talk about it and have these conversations. And even when it comes down to the gun laws and those things uh, with people being able to carry guns and uh, obtain weapons that may not have went through a background check, those are things we have to have. Now, I know many uh, think that we shouldn't have that conversation and no one from church maybe should say anything about it. But before we are church, we are also a part of uh, the states, the United States, we are part of, we are a citizen of this country, and certainly those things that happen, uh, that uh, take place concern us, and we have to be able to have the conversation also with them, because not only have we had shootings in stores and other places, but we've also had shootings in churches, where people have attacked or targeted churches, synagogues, and all type of things have happened, so we have to have that particular conversation and uh, when we think of just uh, dealing with it also we have to look at it from another uh, perspective and standpoint and that is mental illness sometimes people are mentally ill and they need help they need to be able to go and uh, be taken care of or see a doctor or someone that can help them in their mental illness in their breakdown and many of them uh, they're mentally ill and you're not always able to detect someone that may be mentally ill. Maybe you may run across some writings or something that they did, but you're not always able to detect those that are in that area that are mentally ill. But when we look at those uh, things that happened in uh, El Paso, Texas, uh, from what the news report has given us is that uh, that young man drove uh, 600 miles over nine hours and then went in the store, cased the store, came back out, and then went back in with a gun uh, shooting. And so he sort of knew what he was doing, whether it was premeditated, but he went in and did it, and 22 people were killed and then others that were injured uh, and had no regard for not only uh, life, but not even for children or elderly or whatever. And uh, those things we have to talk about because 
uh, when we look at this, uh, that was very tragic. It was something that happened. And could it be possible that we're dealing on several different fronts? We could be dealing with mental illness, or we could be dealing with uh, someone that was uh, racial or someone that had hatred in their heart or someone that had been uh, primed and pumped some kind of way with those things. And at that age that he was, that's even more disturbing because usually uh, it takes a while for those things to build up in a person when it comes to uh, that type of hatred unless they have been taught that particular uh, thing from uh, a baby or being youth or coming up. Uh, most times, uh, it's just not something that happens just uh, off the bat, somehow, some way that has to be taught. And I think we have to talk about it when it comes to that in this country, as far as racism, as far as hatred, as far as mental illness. We have to talk about those things and we have to discuss those things. Those are things we need to discuss, not just in church settings. We need to discuss those things outside of church. We need to discuss those things with our families. We need to discuss those things with our friends and with those that we are connected to. Why? Because uh, it, it's a conversation that if we don't have it, we'll probably have more and more of this taking place. Uh, the young man that went in the club, uh, outside the club in Dayton, Ohio, thank God that the police were able to cut uh, his uh, thing down uh, to a short uh, number because they were there so quickly or already in the vicinity. Uh, but when we think about him, uh, the video shows that he went in with his sister and another friend. And then in about 45 minutes to an hour came out and uh, went out of the club and then came back in tactical gear and start shooting. And uh, those persons that lost their lives, those persons that were injured, uh, it was just tragic. I was looking at one of the interviews with one of the mothers that her daughter uh, had a seven-year-old daughter and had just had a baby a few months ago and was her first time sort of getting out. And she said to her mother, I want to go out with some of my girlfriends. And they went out. And before they could even get into this place, uh, they had been there maybe about four minutes and uh, the shootings took place and she was one of the ones that was shot, thought she was just grazed, uh, but found out uh, as she FaceTimed her boyfriend to tell him that she had been grazed and to come pick her up and, uh, and uh, you know, about her children. And before they could get there, she had already uh, passed. She was deceased. And uh, the last thing that one of the persons that were with her during the time, uh, her last uh, words to them was, uh, I've got to get to my children or take care of my children. And so just tragic on all ends, not uh, knowing and being able to go out into places without things happening like that. Now, the discussion it has to be, and we have to talk about it uh, when it comes to uh, guns and gun violence. Uh, I know there are a lot of people that are on both sides of this, some are on one side of the aisle, some are on the other as to say, well, should we have guns, should we not have guns? Um, well, I, I have to tell you, I, I am a carrier, I have a permit to carry a gun, and I've had it for a minute, and usually uh, when I go out, I usually don't leave the house without my gun at all. I usually take it with me everywhere, it's somewhere close on my hip and so uh when you know i'm so i'm not one that's against guns but when i went to uh purchase or get a gun i did have to go through an extensive background check they had to check and uh, even when i got them renewed earlier this year i had to uh, still go through uh, somewhat of background check and they had to check and see had I had any mental breakdowns that I had committed any crimes or whatever it was and so that is something that I had to go through and then if I went to purchase a gun I had to fill out a long paper so they could do a background check and so I, I do believe that we should uh, work on some type of laws that will give us greater background checks on persons that are purchasing guns. And especially, especially uh, when you talk about purchasing a gun, it's one thing to purchase 
a gun that's just a a, a pistol or a, a a revolver or a uh, uh, what is it the the other <laughs> the other guns <laughs> my my mind went right there but uh, just just to uh, uh, a millimeter a nine millimeter or uh, all of those when you talk about uh, purchasing those type of guns that's different as opposed to purchasing some of these uh, high capacity guns that kill uh, when you think about you know what what these uh, men and young men were shooting with uh, AKs and that 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 type of thing. I just don't think you should be able uh, to purchase those. Those are for like if you were in the military or something. You know, of course, military weapons. But uh, a regular citizens basically shouldn't be able to purchase that. That that is not a gun that you would use. Because what are you going to use it for? That's that's the first question that we need to ask is where are you going to use that particular weapon? How are you going to use it? And so I think that uh, we need to deal with those type of things. Now, it seems to be that there's always a debate and a fight on the uh, one side of the aisle and the other side of the aisle, whether it's Democrat or Republican. But I would love to see us to uh, possibly... Uh, just put it where we can just make it about the people and not always about our parties. Everything is about party. It's along party lines. Uh, the uh, NRA, uh, whether they're in the pocket of somebody, I don't know. But it's always about party lines. Everything is about the party and what we, you know, what we're going to do. And and uh, one group says, well, we don't need to do that. Another group says we need to do it. We've got to really, when we start seeing these type of shootings, they're talking about in this year of 2019, there's been over 265, I believe they said, mass shootings. So that means any, anybody, anywhere with somebody, four, uh, four or more were killed. And so when we have these type of things taking place in a year, we're almost about to outrun the calendar year. It's only 365 days in a year, and we're about to catch that. And so we've got to do something a little different, and we've got to uh, talk to our lawmakers. We've got to get to them and say to them, uh, make it about the people, make it about the safety of the people, not about the companies that are making money, not about the gun man manufacturers, not about those that are doing that, but let's make it about the people because this has become a people issue. It would be another thing if, if people were using these guns to kill uh, animals or something, but they're killing people, and they're killing innocent people. So we've got to have that conversation. Somebody's got to talk about this. Somebody's got to say something about it. And so I, I want you to uh, think about this as today on this podcast. And I wanted to talk uh, with you because I believe it's important. I believe that we've got to make our voices to be heard. We can't sit back and be scared to talk about these issues that are affecting us because it could have been any of us in that Walmart. It could have been any of us in Ohio. It could have been any of us just walking down the street with, uh, you know, them taking things and, and stabbing people. They had a stabbing uh, just uh, with th three or four people got killed in L.A., just uh, those type of things. We, we need to make it where it's not as easy for people to just to get a hold of these type of things without putting them on the radar. Not to take away their freedom, but someone needs to be monitoring uh, those that are doing and buying certain things so we'll know what's taking place. I believe that it's important for us to do it. I believe that we have to do it. And speaking just as a citizen, not as a pastor, but as a citizen of the United States, I believe that we must do a better job. Um, if you've ever been in those type of situations and to see those type of things that are happening, it's almost like everything we, uh, we sort of start dealing with it after it gets to a certain point. Uh, those that they start dealing with uh, uh, drunk driving, DUI, after so many people got killed. They start dealing with other things after it got to a certain point. Well, now we're at that point that any time you have 265 mass shootings in one year, and that's not to talk about even the back 
uh, shooting that have taken place in previous years when we talk about schools and uh, even elementary schools, when we talk about churches, when we talk, oh, it, we, we've got, we could go back and somebody by now or at this point should have come up with something that will put something in place. Will it stop everybody? No. But if we don't have anything in place, then we don't have a starting point. We have to start somewhere dealing with this issue of gun control, dealing with this issue. Then we've got to make uh, ready that when people are dealing with mental illness, uh, we've got to be able to find a place for them to go to deal with their mental illness, their breakdowns, their times of what they feel someone's talking to them or they had to do this. We've got to deal with it. These are real issues, and these are issues that affect all of us, not just a few, but all of us. And so today, I just wanted to share with you on this podcast, and let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about it in our churches. Let's talk about it in our homes. Let's talk about it with our young people. Let's talk about it with those that are in the street, even in gangs. Let's talk about it. Let's have the conversation. We never know until we have the conversation who it, uh, whose life it may affect, whose life it may change, but we have to have the conversation. We cannot sit back silent anymore and not say anything. We must speak out. We must talk about it. We must use our platforms to talk about it. We must use our platforms to deal with this and racism and all the things that we have to deal with. We have to have a platform for it. I'm so glad that you've joined me, so glad that you've listened at today's podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate your comments and uh, whatever they may be. Some are good. I know some may be bad, but it's okay. It's about having the conversation, and it's about getting started as we talk about these things that have happened, these mass shootings, and also gun control. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to sit back and not do anything? Or are we going to do something about it? I would love to hear from you. You can email me at rrcdmartin at gmail.com. Thank you so much for being a part of today's podcast. I appreciate you. And we'll look to see you and want you to join us again next time. I